Want to hear a joke about covalent bonding? Yes, and thanks for sharing. That's right, today we're talking about bond type properties. Hit the theme. Ain't nothing but a chem thing, baby. Too flipped out, teachers going crazy. Lancaster is a district that pays me. Unbreakable, so please don't try to break this. But uh, back to the lecture at hand. Hello and welcome to another episode of Shu Fu coming at ya. I'm your host Fu and with me as always is Shu. Shu know it. So in the last episode we talked about the three different bond types. And today we're going to talk about their properties. So let's get started. Bond types two, properties. A lesson from the bonding unit. Let's begin by talking about ionic solids and their structure. Compounds with ionic bonds are solid under standard conditions. They have a crystal lattice structure in which there is a repeating 3D pattern of cations and anions. Like you can see in this video we're about to show you totally. of us playing with toys. So here we have our crystal lattice. We can see the alternating green and blue colors. The green is going to represent our anion that has gained an electron to become negative. The blue is going to represent our cation which has uh, lost an electron to become positive. And as you can see, it's got this repeating pattern all over it. So we're going to take a look at some properties of ionic solids. A good example that you guys should be very familiar with is table salt. So think of table salt when thinking of the properties of ionic solids. They're strong bonds, which means they have high melting points and boiling points. They're hard, dense, and brittle. They're soluble in water, but they're insoluble in organic solvents like acetone, toluene, or oils. Thinking back to table salt, you've probably never seen it melt because of the strong bonds that lead to a high melting point. Table salt's definitely hard, you wouldn't describe it as soft, and it's very dense. If you add it to water, it sinks right to the bottom. You can grind your salt like at your dinner table, so it's very brittle. We know that salt dissolves in water, and you may not know that it's insoluble in organic solvents, but you've probably never seen table salt dissolve in an oil. The crystal lattice is held together by very strong ionic bonds. It's hard for me to pull these apart. But if I do shift the crystal lattice just a little bit, I will get the same ions repelling each other. I can actually feel a little bit of repulsion there, and a layer will drop down. This gives rise to ionic solids being very brittle. Quick aside, you need moving charge for conductivity. So let's look at the conductivity of ionic compounds. Ionic compounds are non-conductors as solids since the ions are trapped in the crystal lattice. However, ionic compounds are conductors as liquids, molten, or when dissolved in water, aqueous, since the ions are freely moving. And by the way, it's not the electrons that are freely moving, it's the ions. We say the ionic compound dissociates or breaks down into ions in water. Shoo, get the paper towels. We have a wet bench. <laughs> <laughs> We've got some water molecules here. We have the red oxygen atoms with the two white hydrogen atoms to form H2O. Here you can see our crystal lattice, our salt crystal that has alternating positive and negative ions. When we take our salt and we put it into water, these two will interact, they will dissociate. So the water molecules will actually Whoa. interact with the ions. They surround them, it actually pulls it apart. We call this process dissociation. So the water molecules, they will keep interacting until we have pulled apart these ions. They typically surround those ions. Whoa. Now we have some solid here, I'm gonna leave that there. But now we have two ions in water. They're dissolved. They're dissociated from each other. They're separate. And they're free to move in the solution of salt water. And because they're charged and because they um, are freely moving, they are allowed to conduct electricity. So if we introduce a current to this, we can conduct electricity across this solution. Molecular compounds, which contain covalent bonds, let's talk about their structure. Most covalently bonded structures form molecules, which are separate and distinct from each other. They may be in the solid, liquid, or gas phase. Continuing on with the properties of molecular compounds, if you want a good way to remember the properties of molecular compounds, think of butter. Compound properties are governed by the weak attractions between the molecules, not the bonds themselves, like in an ionic compound. This leads to low melting and boiling points. The solids tend to be soft. 
Taking a look at the image below, we've got two molecules of HCl, and the H is bonded to the Cl with a covalent bond. Now this bond is strong. Now between the two molecules, we have what's known as an intermolecular attraction. Now because it's the intermolecular attraction that governs the properties, and that intermolecular attraction is relatively weak, these tend to have low melting points, and they tend to be soft. Okay, so we have some molecules here. We have bonds between carbon and hydrogen in all these molecules, but notice that the molecules are separate from one another. So if I were to separate these from each other, instead of breaking the covalent bonds, I would actually break the attractions that occur between the molecules. So I add energy to separate them, but I haven't broken any covalent bonds. Molecular compounds are also soluble in organic solvents. They tend to be insoluble in water, and they're always non-conductors because they have no moving charge. Now we know that salt dissolves in water and when it breaks down into ions, it can conduct electric charge. Most molecular compounds don't dissolve in water, but something like sugar, which is molecular, we know does dissolve in water. When it does dissolve in water, it actually can't break down into any ions, and so sugar water would not actually conduct electricity. Thinking back to butter as our example of our molecular compound, remember for the properties, Butter has a pretty low melting point. You put it in the microwave for a couple of seconds, it's already melting. Butter also tends to be very soft. It's insoluble in water, but soluble in things like other oils, like olive oil, for instance. Butter is also a non-conductor. It has no moving charge. There is another structure that comes from covalent bonds. These are called covalent network solids. Let's begin with the structure. Although they have covalent bonds, I mean, it says it right in the name, there are no molecules. Instead, there's a continuous network of atoms, much like the crystal lattice in an ionic solid. Because of this, they tend to be more like ionic solids than molecular solids. Let's discuss some properties of these network solids. I'd like you to think of a diamond whenever you see the terms network solid. Bonds, not the weak attractions between molecules, must be broken to melt or boil. So they have high melting and boiling points. They're insoluble in water and organic solvents. Generally non-conductors, except for graphite. So here we have an example of a network solid. We can see that we have carbon covalently bonded to other carbon atoms. So in order to melt this, I'd have to actually break every single one of these covalent bonds to form um, a liquid. So to melt it would take an awful lot of energy. Now also notice we're breaking bonds to melt this and we're not just separating molecules. Going back to our diamond example, we know that diamonds are very hard. They would have extremely high melting points, take a lot of energy to break down. We wouldn't expect a diamond to dissolve in anything, be it water or an oil or other organic solvent. And we also wouldn't expect a diamond to be a good conductor. Finally, we have metallic solids. Let's talk about their structure. Metallic solids have a lattice structure of metal ions surrounded by freely moving electrons. That should sound familiar from our last episode. So some metallic properties here. I want you to think of a penny, okay? It's hard and dense. They tend to have high melting points and boiling points. They're malleable and ductile. They're good conductors of electricity in solid or liquid phase due to freely moving electrons, not ions. They're insoluble in water and organic solvents. So going back to our penny, we would think of a penny as hard and dense, not soft. It would take a lot of energy to melt that penny, so it has a high melting point. Uh, with enough force, you could actually cause it to bend a little bit, so that goes along with being malleable and ductile. Uh, the penny would be a good conductor like most metals. Um, I want to remind you too that because it has freely moving electrons and electrons are charged, anytime we have moving charge, we are a good conductor. We also wouldn't expect the penny to dissolve in anything. Well, that's going to wrap up today's episode on bond properties. It's been emotional. Today's episode is brought to you by... Nose job in a can. Step one, grab can. Step two, smash face.
But we never are, for we zone to the break of dawn S-E-I-E-N-C-E in the hall, they call S-Wing You know we never wear a tie Like my homies, boys, two men, it's so hard to say goodbye Like, like this, that, and this, and a It's like that, and like this, and like that, and a It's like this You're going in low power mode Plug and chill to the next episode